the global community has turned its focus to the conflict between Israel and Hamas in the 8th century. As dawn broke, Israel issued a directive to evacuate Gaza's hospitals. That evening, the Israel Defense Forces IDF, confirmed that ground operations were initiated in the Gaza Strip, aiming to clear the region and rescue captive Israelis. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, addressing the public on the sacred Jewish Day of Shabbat, expressed the nation's resolve, emphasizing their commitment to defending their homeland with fierce determination. Netanyahu conveyed his condolences to bereaved families, asserting a strong stance against Hamas, indicating that their current operations were merely the beginning of a longer campaign. The IDF reported conducting operations at multiple locations within Gaza. They clarified that these operations involved both infantry and armored units, with the primary objective being the rescue of captive Israelis. Brigadier General Daniel Hager, an IDF spokesperson, emphasized that such actions are crucial to their strategy of neutralizing threats around Gaza. In related reports, the IDF stated that both manned and drone aircraft were active over Gaza. After a significant attack from Hamas on Israel followed by Israel's declaration of war, the world's attention was riveted to the ongoing situation in Gaza. On the conflict's seventh day, Gaza City residents were advised to move southward by the Israeli army. The United Nations expressed deep concern over the potential humanitarian fallout from such a move, urging reconsideration. Meanwhile, Hezbollah expressed its intent to engage Israel, leading the Israeli military to send aerial alerts to Gaza. On a broadcast by CNN Turk's Mercury program, Gexai Ernsboro presented a statement from the Gaza Ministry of Interior. The Israeli military conducted an airstrike on a convoy, resulting in 70 casualties and injuring over 200. Israel reported targeting Hezbollah sites in Lebanon, stating it was in response to gunfire from these positions, especially around the town of Misgavam near the northern border. Rocket warning sirens were heard in Tel Aviv and neighboring cities, as reported by Al Jazeera. The Palestinian Ministry of Health recorded 1799 fatalities and 6,388 injuries due to Israeli operations in Gaza. Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdallahian visited Lebanon, emphasizing that Israel's continued operations in Gaza were destabilizing for the region. He held separate meetings with the Hezbollah Secretary General and the Lebanese Prime Minister. He further asserted that if Israel continued its aggression, a broader range of responses should be considered. Amnesty International's Crisis Evidence Lab reported that Israeli forces utilized white phosphorus artillery shells during the Gaza operation. Hezbollah's leader, Sheikh Naim Qassem, announced his organization's readiness to confront Israel. Despite international calls for restraint, drones dispersed leaflets over Gaza, urging residents to evacuate southward. Al Jazeera detailed this directive, emphasizing the instruction to move south. Following the evacuation notice, the Arab League sought the United Nations intervention. Ahmed Abul Gait, the Arab League's Secretary General, labeled Israel's evacuation directive as potentially criminal under international law. Globally, many rallied in support of Palestinians post-Friday prayers, with demonstrations occurring in various countries like Jordan, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Venezuela, Italy, Germany, Japan, and Australia. In France, authorities employed tear gas and water cannons to manage the crowds. During a visit to Israel, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin commented on the situation, highlighting the challenges posed by Hamas and reaffirming the US's continued military support for Israel. He also expressed concerns about the potential relocation of a significant number of individuals in northern Gaza. The situation in Gaza is intensifying, with imminent concerns of a complete breakdown. Responding to inquiries about the time frame for Palestinians to leave northern Gaza, Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagar mentioned that they are striving to allocate ample time and understand the process might exceed a day. Russian President Putin expressed Moscow's disapproval of a ground operation, stressing Russia's unwillingness to accept an invasion due to potential civilian casualties. In retaliation to Israel's evacuation request, Hamas claimed an assault on Israel's Ben Gurion airport. The Izzed Din Al Qasim Brigade's Hamas's military faction declared their attack on the airport situated in Ashkelon. Israeli forces utilized tear gas against Palestinian civilians. In the midst of the chaos, prayer mats were left behind, and this Israeli police response was broadcast live on CNN Turk. Medical professionals in Israel labeled the evacuation directive as severely detrimental for patients unable to move and pleaded with the Israeli administration to reconsider. King Abdullah II of Jordan warned Israel of repercussions if Palestinians were forcibly relocated to Jordan. With the ultimatum's deadline approaching, 
A significant number of Israeli army reservists assembled near the northern border of Gaza. Israeli aircrafts flying at varying altitudes targeted residential areas. Humanitarian organizations have urged the global community to intervene, labeling the forced migration as potentially criminal. In recent operations, Israeli forces secured a vast array of documents. Reports confirm 258 Israeli soldiers have died during the conflict. Israeli military presence was observed near the Lebanon border, with troops seen inside houses in Metula. Hamas states that in recent hostilities, 13 incarcerated individuals died due to Israeli actions. These fatalities occurred within the last day. Several casualties were identified as foreign nationals, but their exact nationalities remained undisclosed by Israel. Following Israel's directive concerning Gaza, Egypt increased its security presence in measures, as reported by an official to the Associated Press. Israel is preparing to launch a ground operation in addition to air and sea operations. The Israeli Merkava tanks, armored vehicles, and 300,000 Israeli soldiers deployed to the Gaza border in the past few days signaled a ground operation. At the same time, statements made by the Israeli armed forces and Israeli Prime Minister Minister Netanyahu's visit to Israeli soldiers wearing body armor also signaled the beginning of ground operations. However, it should be noted that the widely expected ground operation has not yet begun. Only localized attacks continue. It was also claimed that Israel's planned weekend ground operation against the besieged Gaza Strip was postponed for a few days due to unfavorable weather conditions. According to three senior Israeli military officials who revealed in classified details of the plan, the army is preparing to invade Gaza, with tens of thousands of troops ordered to take over Gaza and eliminate Hamas which rules the city. The army says its ultimate goal is to eliminate the top political and military hierarchy of Hamas, which controls Gaza and led last week's attacks in Israel that killed 1,300 people. It is expected to be the largest ground operation since Israel entered Lebanon in 2006. It will also be the first time since the 2008 invasion of Gaza that Israel has attempted to hold a piece of territory even if only briefly, according to three senior military officials. Israeli military officials said the operation was originally planned for the weekend but was delayed by several days, in part because of weather conditions that would make it difficult for pilots and drone operators to provide air cover for ground forces. The Israeli army, which has also briefly suspended its ground operation, has stepped up its offensive at sea and continues to clash with Hamas forces. Images posted on the social media platform reveal dramatic clashes in the midst of the battle. The Israel Defense Forces hit Hamas hideouts at sea. The Israeli warship Sar-6 Corvette can be seen firing on Hamas targets in Gaza as the battle rages. The footage also shows Israeli soldiers clashing with Hamas militants attempting to carry out an infiltration attempt from the sea. The footage shows smoke rising from the sea after the explosives hit the target. The video shows showed that after the Hamas speedboats were sunk by the 916th Patrol Squadron's Dvora-class patrol boats, snapper sailors on small Defender-class boats opened fire and used depth charges against the surviving terrorists as well as Hamas divers. The IDF said that the attackers tried to swim towards the Israeli coast. The IDF said that sniper fighters opened fire on the terrorists during the pursuit at sea. The fighters repelled a number of terrorists at sea, and from there, they continued to intercept the terrorists when they reached the coastline. Sniper is a protection force and port security unit that is part of the Navy's patrol squadrons, operating from bases in Ashdod, Haifa, and Eilat. The IDF said the Navy killed dozens of Hamas militants on speedboats and other vessels during last weekend's attack. The Navy's elite Shaitet 13 Commando unit also fought the militants. The IDF released footage showing Shaitet 13 Commandos retaking the Sufa military outpost on the Gaza border from Hamas militants. The head cam video shows soldiers fighting Hamas militants inside the base, killing some and arresting others. The soldiers were seen reaching the base's bunker, where soldiers who survived the Hamas attack were hiding. One of the soldiers shouted, Shaitet, Shaitet, stay in the bunker, we are coming. According to the IDF, Shaitet 13 units killed more than 60 Hamas militants and rescued about 250 hostages at the Sufi outpost and in the towns of Bari, Kfar Aza, Sud, Mefal Sim, and Niraz. The IDF added that the soldiers arrested 26 other militants, including a senior member of Hamas naval forces. Meanwhile, today, the Israel Defense Forces carried out an airstrike in the Gaza Strip, which resulted in the elimination of the commander of the southern district of the Hamas group. The Israeli army reportedly eliminated Mortezid, 
who commanded the southern region of Hamas's national security wing. The army said the attack on him was made possible by precise intelligence. The Israeli Air Force said it destroyed the Hamas commander's headquarters. The statement said the base of operations headed by Ali Kachi, who was himself killed several days ago, was hit along with dozens of other headquarters and modern launching positions. A number of Hamas militants were also killed during the attack on a military facility, the Air Force said. The news came after the IDF announced that it had killed Musa's aide. The southern region commander of Hamas's national security wing, meanwhile, clashes and attacks between Hezbollah and the Israel Defense Forces continued to escalate. In addition to anti-tank missile attacks on IDF vehicles, rocket attacks continue to come from inside Lebanon and are being met by Israeli airstrikes. There have also been several armed clashes between small groups of Hezbollah infantry and IDF personnel. These appear to be smaller disturbance operations or reconnaissance and shaping operations ahead of a larger conflict. Hezbollah has a huge arsenal that it can unleash, so this weapon is clearly designed to be below the threshold for an all-out Israeli response. Meanwhile, Iran continues to rattle its saber, threatening a much wider conflict as Israel carries out its large-scale operation in Gaza. Iran's foreign minister said in a statement today that Israel has an opportunity to make a correction in the coming hours. Otherwise, the resistance will develop its strategies and change the map of the region. Other current developments of the day are as follows. President Joe Biden canceled his trip to Colorado for national security meetings, the White House said. The news came as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reported that Turks were underway for a possible visit to the Middle East after Biden extended an invitation. The White House said in a statement that there were no new travel plans to be announced at this time. Biden's visit would follow high-risk shuttle diplomacy by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who has traveled to several countries in the region over the past few days. Blinken returned Returned to Israel on Monday morning to meet with Netanyahu and President Isaac Herzog, as well as Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant and opposition leader Yer Lapid, according to a U.S. official. Meanwhile, Egyptian Foreign Minister Sama Shukri said there has been no progress in efforts to open the Rafah crossing between Egypt and Gaza. Speaking at a press conference with his French counterpart, Shukri blamed Israel for the continued closure of the crossing. Shukri said Egypt supports the opening of the crossing and that aid vehicles are standing by to to be allowed through. A Palestinian official in charge of the Rafah crossing said that five empty UN gasoline trucks are currently waiting on the Gaza side of the Rafah crossing, hoping to cross into Egypt and refuel in Egypt. The Israeli Prime Minister's office denied that there were any arrangements to open the Rafah border. Several dozen US citizens and their spouses are waiting to board an evacuation ship in the port of Haifa. This morning's queue follows a security warning issued on Sunday by the US Embassy in Jerusalem for citizens wishing to leave the country country due to flight cancellations due to clashes between Israel and Hamas. Citizens and their immediate relatives were invited to arrive at the port of Haifa to board a ship bound for Cyprus, from where they will fly to the United States. The head of the Arab League is calling for an immediate end to military operations in the Gaza Strip and to allow aid to enter the Palestinian territory. Secretary General Ahmed Abulgait said that during a meeting with Arab justice ministers in Baghdad, we demand an immediate cessation of military operations and the opening of safe corridors to deliver aid to the population. The Israeli army continues to strike Hamas targets mainly in the Gaza Strip, starting from Gaza City and extending to Ashkelon, Ashdod, Tel Aviv, and Haifa. Hamas militants have been carrying out terrorist reprisals against Israeli attacks, but today the shape of the war has changed. Israel deployed its naval forces and carried out massive offensive operations against Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip for hours and hours. Israeli intelligence planes flew reconnaissance flights over the Gaza Strip to coastal areas. The reconnaissance revealed the location of crucial Hamas warehouses for underground bunkers. The Israeli Navy directly targeted the area where the warehouses were located. It was reported that these Israeli Navy operations were carried out in conjunction with Operation Iron Sword. In this operation, the Israeli Navy struck the central areas of the Gaza Strip on the Mediterranean coast and the residential areas of Khan Yunis City. Dozens of rockets were fired from Israeli attack boats at Hamas militant ammunition depots in the coastal areas of the city. The Palestinian state-run news agency reported that there were no immediate reports of casualties, injuries, or property damage. However, according to reports released today by the Israel Defense Forces, a large number of militant sources were destroyed after artillery fire from Israeli Navy missile boats. Combat helicopters and ground artillery struck the docks in Khan Yunis and Gaza City, 
which Hamas uses to carry out terror attacks along the Israeli coastline. As part of this naval operation, the Israel Defense Forces announced that a number of Hamas naval targets in the Gaza Strip were hit, as well as a Hamas diver attempting to infiltrate Israel by sea. The Israel Defense Forces released footage of strikes as part of a naval operation against Hamas militants. Naval targets in the Gaza Strip. The footage clearly showed missiles fired from Israeli attack boats and naval forces, destroying Hamas targets on the coastline and causing huge waves after the rockets hit them. The footage also showed the explosion of an ammunition depot on the coastline, allegedly belonging to Hamas. Dozens of rockets were fired off the coast of the Gaza Strip, destroying Hamas targets and creating images reminiscent of ancient wars. These naval operations set the stage for Israel's ground offensive against Gaza. In addition, the presence of the USS Gerald Ford, the world's largest aircraft carrier with a crew of 5,000 in the Mediterranean, was a serious deterrent for Hamas, which has been carrying out terrorist activities against Israel. And now, in addition to the USS Gerald Ford, Another U.S. ship is on its way to the area supporting Israel in its naval offensive operations in the Gaza Strip. A second U.S. aircraft carrier strike group reportedly left Norfolk, Virginia, last Friday. In addition, a large number of U.S. jets are en route to U.S. military bases in the Middle East. The Pentagon has ordered additional fighter jets to support A-10, F-15, and F-16 squadrons at bases in the Middle East. The U.S. intelligence community has said more will be added if necessary. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall told an Atlantic Council event that the service is directing units that are about to return home to remain in place along with their replacements. Secretary Kendall also revealed that since the attacks, U.S. Air Force C-17s have landed in Israel and departed again. The transport planes picked up U.S. military personnel who were there for a military exercise that had not yet begun when the attacks began. The U.S. Air Force said this in a statement. Meanwhile, the first shipment of additional ammunition provided by the U.S. to Israel has already arrived in the war zone. Much more military resources are expected to be added to this additional ammunition soon, in line with this expectation, the United States is working hard to help Israel. Most recently, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met with Israeli leaders to discuss what else the United States of America can provide. Secretary Austin announced that a small special operation is now assisting Israel with intelligence, planning, advising, and consulting with the Israel Defense Forces on their efforts to rescue the hostages. In other words, U.S. Special Operations Forces are now helping the Israeli military with planning and intelligence. But these forces have not been tasked with hostage rescue, which would allow them to fight on the ground in the conflict. This is something that U.S. President Joe Biden's administration does not approve of. But White House spokesman John Kirby said that the Israelis do not want this for now. This increase in security measures reflects U.S. concern that the deadly war between Hamas and Israel could escalate into a more dangerous regional clash. The primary task of these ships and fighter jets is, therefore, to create a force presence that will deter Hezbollah, Iran, or others from taking advantage of the situation at the heart of it all. It is seen as paving the way for the Israel Defense Forces to launch a ground attack on Gaza after destroying Hamas targets at sea. The destruction of more than 800 Hamas targets in Gaza so far supports Israel's ground offensive operations. It is known that Israeli Merkava tanks are currently waiting to enter Gaza. Ground footage shows Israeli Merkava Mk-4 main battle tanks, M113 armored personnel carriers, and M109 Paladin 155mm self-propelled howitzers lined up along the Gaza border in southern Israel. These tanks were even allegedly used the other day in an offensive operation near the area, where they neutralized three Hamas militants. Given all this, as the clock ticks down, Israel may be firing the flare gun for a ground operation prior to the ground offensive operation. Israel gave Gaza residents 24 hours to move to the south of the city. The Gaza Strip, about 25 miles long and 9 miles wide, is home to more than 2 million people, making it one of the densest areas in the world. The Israeli military's demands that the entire population of Gaza be squeezed into half the territory seem unlikely. The United Nations agrees with this assessment, noting that Tel Aviv's demand is unlikely to be realized in such a short time. Nevertheless, Israeli fighter jets have launched leaflets over Gaza calling on residents to leave the city. Even now, thousands of Gaza residents are trying to reach the southern part of the city by car and on foot. Israel has already announced that Gaza City will not be supplied with electricity and water until Monday and that humanitarian aid will only reach the city on Tuesday. During this time, 
It is thought that Israel's attacks on Hamas militants in Gaza will intensify. Hamas, on the other hand, claimed that Israel's calls to Gaza residents were baseless propaganda and that there was nothing to worry about. The critical point here is that the Israeli Defense Ministry believes that Hamas will use the residents of Gaza as a shield to protect themselves. While all these possibilities continue to raise concerns, the heavy costs of this violent war in the Middle East are also coming to light. According to the latest figures released by the Israel Defense Forces, Hamas terrorist attacks have killed more than 1,300 Israeli soldiers, law enforcement officers, and civilians and wounded more than 3,200. In addition, approximately 120 Israelis and foreign nationals, including U.S. citizens, are being held hostage by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. These are Israel's highest casualties since the Holocaust and the end of the Second World War. But given the Israeli government's preparations, it is clear that its army will take this war to the end and will try to inflict such a heavy blow on Hamas that the terrorist organization, which has the direct and indirect support of Iran and Qatar, will not be able to succeed.